Welcome to this online lecture of modern physics. We are discussing atomic models and this fourth chapter atomic models can be divided into two major parts. The first one is the atomic models that we have discussed and these are the topics which are the reason behind the title of this chapter atomic models. The second part of this chapter uh, has related but different topic which is based on lasers so we have uh, finished discussion on the first part of this chapter atomic models and now uh, from this lecture we will start discussing lasers in the first lecture we will discuss these three processes stimulated absorption spontaneous emission and stimulated emission before we discuss the process themselves we will see uh, the way we represent two state systems. So let's consider how two state systems are represented. In this diagram, these two energy states are shown this E1, which is the lower energy state or ground state, as far as these two states are considered, and E2 is the higher energy state or excited state. This diagram does not mean that there are only two energy levels in the system. In fact, there could be many energy levels which are in between E1 and E2. There could be energy levels which are lesser than energy, le energy states E1. And there could be energy levels. There may be energy levels which have energies higher than E2. But when we consider these two state system, what we do is we stick or we confine our discussion to only these two energy levels of the given system. I will briefly make a comment about what the system are in, sh uh, in shortly, but right now let's concentrate here. So basically, when we say that it is a two, st two state system, that means that there could be so many other energy levels, but we are focusing or we are discussing our discussion to these two st energy states E1 and E2. Now, this we are talking in context of lasers, as I mentioned just now. And lasers are invented; they are um, manufactured by humans. We have we, we manufacture these lasers, and therefore, what we can do is, in a, any given system, we can choose any two energy levels and then focus our discussion to these two energy levels. So that is what it means by this diagram. Now, let's come to the point: what system means here? We we are talking about quantum systems. What do we mean by quantum system is this? This could be atoms, molecules or nanoparticles which are very small particles of the dimensions of 10 to the power minus 9 meter. So when it comes to these smaller tiny particles, the classical mechanics or laws of classical mechanics are not applicable there. There we have to use another theory the laws which are governed at that stage are given by quantum mechanics and in any quantum system when there are bound particles just like in atoms electrons are bounded to the nucleus or in nanoparticles there are atoms which are they're confined together and uh, in molecules also we have bounded atoms so whenever we have a bounded system these quantum system tend to have discrete energy energy levels there are no continuous energy level to these levels to these quantum systems and and what i mean by discrete energy levels is not all energies are possible only certain uh, energy levels are allowed in there so here we are our system could be any of these quantum systems it could be atom it could be molecule or it could be something like uh, nanoparticles or it can be something which is called as quantum dot. So these systems are basically atoms. They can be molecules. They can be quantum dots. Quantum dots, in a way, you can say they are there. In a way, you can say that they are uh, artificial atoms. They are manufactured or they are synthesized for uh, given energy levels in quantum dots you can tailor these energy levels you can have these energy levels uh, as you want to 
So here when we consider two state systems, we have quantum systems which are bound and therefore the energy levels are discrete. And they can be any of these systems, they could be atoms, molecules or quantum dots or nanoparticles. The second thing is that having these two energy levels E1 and E2 does not mean that these are only two energy levels in the system. In fact, here what it means is we are concerned with two energy levels E1 and E2 out of rest of the energy level. So we are not taking them into account. There could be energy levels as, as I just mentioned. Right? And when I when we consider a drought like this, that means it is a system. We are here discussing one system which is in energy state E1. So it could be atom, molecule or the quantum dot. So what this dot represents is or what this diagram represents now is that we have a quantum system which is in energy state E2. Similarly, when you consider a diagram like this, what it means is now we have two quantum systems. The first is in state E1, whereas the second is in state E2. Now, let's go to the main topic. We uh, The topic is the three processes. The first one of them is stimulated absorption. So, what is stimulated absorption? It is basically this. What What is this diagram representing now? Right. Not uh, right. It doesn't actually mean that there is only one quantum system. What it means is we are talking about one quantum system which is in ground state or which is in energy state E1, which is in lower energy state E1. So here let's consider one system which is in lower energy state, which is the ground state for the given two level system. And now a photon, this uh, basically represents a photon. So a photon then, it is uh, in the vicinity of that system, in the quantum system. The photon is now inter interacting with that two level energy system. And you know what happens next. What will happen is the photon and uh, in double quotes, it, the photon may be absorbed by the system. Okay. So this, uh, this photon, which is interacting with the system is absorbed. Its energy is given to the system. And as a result, this system, which is in ground state, it jumps to the excited state. And therefore, the, that system, which we are talking about, has absorbed the photon and it has reached or it, it has gained a higher energy state. Okay, so uh, atom is or rather the quantum system is excited. That is what this diagram means. And all of you know that that photon is absorbed by a system and the system may in that case go to higher energy state or it, the system may be excited but it is a probabilistic system you have to keep this in mind quantum mechanics which is behind all this which is a set of laws which uh, holds which uh, which are obeyed by all these systems it is uh, inherently probabilistic you always talk about probabilities in quantum mechanics so this is probabilistic process what i mean is this suppose you have a system which is in energy state e1 so you you have a system which is in lower energy state there is a photon which is which interacts with that uh, system which is in lower energy state and yet it is not guaranteed that the photon is absorbed all you can talk about is what is the probability of that photon being absorbed so there is one photon all you can talk about is this much chances is there this much probability is there that the photon is absorbed now phys physically what it means Suppose you have identical situations, okay? You have 100 such identical system which are all in energy state E1. And now what you do is, to every of this situation, you have identical photon which interacts with the system. And out of those 100 systems, only 80 of the systems are excited. Rest of the 20 systems are not excited. So here for these 80 number of identical systems, two level systems, the photon is absorbed. And the system then goes to jumps to higher energy state. But for 20 number of systems that this doesn't happen. If you absorb the observe these kind of system. Now, can you tell me what is the probability that the photon is absorbed given this information? It is 80 upon 100. So favorable outcome.
divided by total number of outcomes so it is 0.8 either you can say it is 80% probability or you can say 0.8 is the probability that this photon is absorbed so keep this in mind that these are probabilistic these are probabilistic process moreover we won't go into depth perhaps those uh, who have uh, statistics they have some idea about this these processes are so called markov processes what what i mean what do you mean by markov processes that uh, this probability does not depend on any uh, history of the of the system okay it does not depend on what happened before that particular instance of time so these processes are processes are probabilistic processes just keep in mind keep in mind it is very important now next thing is that this probability is zero for all the frequencies except the frequencies so called resonant frequencies so this photon when has this particular frequency which is e2 minus e1 divided by h then there is a probability that this photon when it interacts with the system is absorbed and system jumps to higher energy level if frequency of the photon is other than this new then the probability of uh, this transition probability that the atom or the system will uh, absorb the photon and it will go to higher energy state is almost zero okay for our practical purposes you can say that it is zero so this probability is non zero this d uh, this excitation may occur only for the frequencies which is given by this relation where e2 is the higher energy state e1 is the lower energy state and you all know what is h what is it so is this first process clear to everyone what we have is excitation what what it means by stimulated absorption is this stimulated because there is influence of a photon which is causing the excitation and therefore stimulated absorption means it is excitation of a quantum system under influence of external photon right so next now um, now let's go on to the next process which is spontaneous emission now what is this diagram representing yes we are considering one quantum system which is in higher energy level which is in excited state in state e2 and um, this also you have an idea that if you have excited syst excited system or excited atom for that matter this the atom won't stay there forever it is going to de excite and when this happens so when the atom de excites then it is going to emit one photon and this process is called as spontaneous emission why spontaneous because the atom is de excited on its own there is nothing external which is causing the atom to de excite and that is why it is called as spontaneous emission emission because a photon is emitted right now you know what is the frequency of this photon what is frequency of the photon which is emitted in this process of spontaneous emission so this is the uh, frequency of the photon which is emitted in this process of spontaneous emission now more there is more to this system uh, than what meets the eye okay this again is a probabilistic system here again i am saying that this is probabilistic process does that means of out of 100 process or out of 100 systems only 20 80 of them say de excite and rest of the 20 stay there forever in that excited state the answer is no that is not what it mean by it is probabilistic process what it means is you can associate some transition rate to this uh, de excitation process what do i mean by transition rate is this i'll try to explain it here okay so what we what what i'm say, saying is uh its transition rate and how do we what do i mean by that is suppose you have excited one system which is in excited state which has energy state higher energy level e1 or e2 and now at any given instance of time as long as it is in excited state at any given instance of time you can associate some probability let me let me denote it by r for now so you can associate this probability per unit time of de excitation so what is this r r is probability per unit time of de excitation and in fact this process is a markov process what is markov process that this r is independent 
at any given instance of time this r is independent it is a constant so you don't worry about for how long the system has been has been in excited state you just at any given instance of time you can associate this r independent of for how long the system was in excited state so this r in that sense does not depend on time okay and that's why it is called as markov process it is independent of the history of the system so irrespective of for how much time or when was this system excited or how it was excited how long it has been in that particular energy state irrespective of all this this r is always a constant transition rate so how can you find out transition rate practically any ideas any hypothetical experiments that you can carry out to find out the transition rate okay the actual experiments which are carried out to can calculate these quantities are Uh, complicated than what we are talking about but just to understand how we can do it uh, i'm trying to we, we will consider this simple hypothetical experiment what you can do is you can have so many systems let me call them 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 up to n capital n number of systems what you can do is you can excite them to energy state e2 and and you say at t is equal to 0 when time is 0 or when the systems are just excited you say that you start you are starting uh, counting the time okay and in this way now once it goes there and you calculate time say first system stays there for uh, t1 seconds in the higher in the excited state now if the first system d excites after this time t1 can you say that the second system will also de excite at the same time can i say that no because this is probabilistic no. process this is probabilistic process or we are talking about is probability per unit time so you don't know when the second system will de excite let's suppose this is excited at time t2 okay then suppose the third system will be de excited at some other time t3 it is not necessary that t3 is going to be same as t1 and t2 and in this way each of this system you can find out after how much time each of the system d excites to energy state it and in this way you calculate all these times on an average how much time is required for the system to d excite how do i calculate given this information exactly very good so you can add all these times tn and divided by capital n which is number of observations that you have made for this time taken for the system 2d excite and that that will give us t average or you can find the inverse of this t average and this will give us probability per unit time am i right is it correct and in fact it now dimensionally also it is it should be correct is this fine this is how you can find out this transition rate you can perform a, a hypothetical hypothetical experiment like this and find out the transition rate so this process of spontaneous emission is a probabilistic process and you can associate transition rate for that that particular system it will be different for different systems or in fact if you consider the same atom but you consider different energy levels e2 sati you calculate the trans transition rate and then you calculate it for some other energy level say e3 and e4 so transition rate which is uh, there for this transition e2 to e2 is not same as transition rate which is there for e4 to e3 so it is property of the given energy states of that particular system this is the transition rate that you can associate with this spontaneous emission there is no external photon which is causing the de excitation the atom or rather the system is de excited on its own emitting a photon and it is a, a probabilistic proce process which is a markov process and you can associate transition rate to that particular transition probability now there is another constant which is associated with this process which is called as lifetime which is generally denoted by this symbol tau and what do we mean by lifetime lifetime is precisely the thing that we have just calculated it is average time taken by the system to de excite once it is excited okay so this t average 
that we have calculated is nothing but tau it is called as the uh, it is there are different names which are used so we will call it lifetime right and now can you tell me what is the relation between this transition rate r and this tau r here is the transition rate probability per unit time at any given instance that the system is de excited and tau is lifetime what is relation between this r and tau now they are inversely proportional right you can say either tau is equal to 1 by r or r is equal to 1 by tau is this clear is this concept of spontaneous emission clear to everyone any questions any doubts this point this is spontaneous emission it is emission of a photon spontaneously where uh, the system de excites from higher energy state to lower energy state and this is important it is this excitation is spontaneous it is without any external agent there is no external photon or any other system or any other thing that is causing the de excitation actually if you study this processes deeper you will see that uh, it is not correct that there is nothing there is something but uh, it is called as external in our case because it is always there you cannot remove that particular thing uh, which are called as vacuum photons if you are interested you can search this so these vacuum photons are there but they are always there you cannot you can never get rid of them so this uh, spontaneous emission then is a process of de excitation without any without presence of external photon these vacuum photons are the reason which which causes this de excitation but which are always there we don't worry about it so we say that there is no external agent right so now let's move on to the third process it is very similar to the second process it is emission of photon so it is clear so what what kind of diagram do you think you will see next on the screen when i click uh, when i hit click we now you uh, you can anticipate that we are going to you are going or you could have on, anticipated that you are going to see a system like this where you have a quantum system which is in excited state and which is now going to emit a photon by de excitation but what is difference now in vicinity there is a external photon so you have a system which is in excited state and then you have this photon with frequency which is given by e2 minus e1 this is important that or in fact when the photon has this particular frequency then only for practical purposes it will interact with this two level system so this photon now is interacting with the system which is in excited state so it is combination of the first two processes now in first case we had a photon but the system was in ground state it was in state e1 in second process we discussed the system which is in e2 but there was no uh, photon present in there so we have a system which is in excited state and the photon interacts with that system and what happens next is the system de excites okay so this system or this ground uh, this quantum system is de excited due to this photon because this photon is interacting with this inter uh, with this excited system the photon de excites and what happens is this this initial photon which is there which was in uh, uh, interacting with the system at first place it doesn't go anywhere so it is acting as catalyst it is not changing its own state it is changing state of the system with itself living unchanged and since the system is now de excited from state e2 to e1 since energy is uh, lost by that system it emits a another photon which is of the same frequency e2 minus e1 divided by h so what has happened is this initial photon which caused the de excitation stays there as it is and due to de excitation there is one more photon but it is the story doesn't end here it is more to this story than uh, what you can see the thing is now both these photons they are identical they are in the same state as it is at some time used okay so these two photons are in the same state they are identical and when you say identical for you now just keep in mind that they are of course monochromatic what is monochromatic yes monochromatic light is when they have the same wavelength or they have the same frequency because they are related uh, therefore you can either say that they have the same frequency or wavelength so these two photons are of course monochromatic the reason is this we are saying that this photon 
external photon interacts only when it has this frequency and the d excitation will cause a photon which has the same frequency so naturally they have it is obvious that they are monochromatic they have the same frequency but another thing which is not that obvious is and which i can i won't be able to explain you why it is so but these photons are coherent also which doesn't happen with normal light when the excitation occurs all the light which is emitted is not necessarily coherent but in this case now both these photons are in the same quantum state or you can say that they are coherent what do you mean by coherent now uh, yes these photons they are this electromagnetic waves are in same phase and i have tried to draw it here that these waves are now in same phase so when an atom or when a quantum system d excites due to uh, influence of external photon what happens is the photon emitted in the process is monochromatic as that of initial the, the ex emitted photon is uh, monochromatic with the influencing photon and at the same time they are also in coherence they their phases are same so what you get is two photons which are uh, monochromatic and which are coherent right so basically in generally speaking they are in same quantum state so this is now interesting and in fact we we are it is we are interested in this process because it leads to lasers this kind of this stimulated emission is the reason why you can have lasers right so this pro process is also probabilistic and therefore you can associate the transition rate when what is transition rate transition rate is probability per unit time of d excitation so this transition rate now is more than transition rate for spontaneous emission when a photon is present the probability that d excitation occurs is more than when the photon is not there that means what will happen to lifetime if this is the case what will happen to lifetime of the system so we are now talking about two cases okay in first case this external photon is not there and when that external photon is not there that transition rate r is the transition rate for spontaneous emission and then we are talking about this stimulated emission so let me write it like this spontaneous emission and stimulated emission or oh, both of them have se so let me write it uh, spontaneous and stimulated so for stimulated emission transition rate is more okay and what will happen to lifetime then it will be less and it is stimulated so uh, stimulated emission this process has less lifetime as compared to spontaneous emission and i am not sure how many of you feel that this is bizarre but when i first read about it i was to me it was uh, weird because uh, at one point you are saying that there is this external photon this photon which is causing the d excitation so in fact it is trying to provide add energy to the system and therefore to our common senses to our classical common senses it appears that the system should stay there in excited state rather than d exciting but that is not happening presence of this external photon in fact is trying to uh, make the transition faster okay this makes the transition faster this external photon and in fact if you go on increasing the number of photons which are in the vicinity of that excited uh, system then lifetime further goes on decreasing okay that means if there is no photon there is some lifetime to one that you can associate if there is one photon then this lifetime decreases if there are two photons the lifetime further decreases as the number of photons go on in, goes on increasing here the probability of d excitation also goes on increasing or the lifetime of the state goes on decreasing because they are inversely proportional is this fine is this idea clear to everyone so increase in the number of photon further increases the transition rate and that in result means it decreases the lifetime of the states is this clear any doubts any questions so far okay before that this this is the definition emission of photon in d excitation of a quantum system under influence of external photon so when there is external photon and when light is emitted we have this 
de excitation is this fine any questions okay so let move on then so uh, this is important if there are four photons which are emitted in this process they are all in the same quantum system for you just keep in mind that they are obviously uh, monochromatic but at the same time they are coherent also so what happens is this kind of thing a cascading effect you can say what it represents is there are three systems which are all in excited state that is what this diagram is trying to show now one of the system one of the atom molecule or whatever the system is when it de excites due to spontaneous emission now because there is no external photon so far as far as this uh, diagram is considered so this first system it spontaneously de excites giving out the photon and the frequency of that photon is known it is equal to e2 minus e1 divided by h now but what has happened is now there is this photon present which which may in, uh, induce or which may cause which may stimulate the emission of one more system the second system and when this photon causes emission of the second system or it causes the second system to de excite what we have now is stimulated emission and these two photons are now identical they are monochromatic of obviously and they are coherent now these two photons means that probability of de excitation is now even more for the third system and if these two photons now causes this third system to de excite what will happen is you will get three photons each due to de excitation of one system each of the system and all these three photons now are monochromatic and they are coherent they are in same quantum states so photons emitted in these kind of processes are all in same quantum state right and this this these kind this effect is the reason behind uh the lasers they 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 are in fact the reason why lasers are possible so what we have discussed is this we discussed stimulated absorption what is stimulated absorption if you have two level systems it can absorb a photon of this frequency which is e2 minus e1 and the atom then can excite to next energy level or higher energy level and this is called as stimulated absorption stimulated because the external photon is causing that absorb uh, is being absorbed and causing the system to excite what is spontaneous emission it is de excitation if the system is in the excited state eventually it de excites to ground state level and in the process it emits a photon which is whose frequency is given by the same relation and since there is nothing external which is causing this de excitation it is called as spontaneous emission and the third process that we discussed is this process of stimulated emission that if you have a system which is in excited state this there is external photon which causes the de excitation and then you get the two photons which are identical in every sense they are uh, they are they are monochromatic they are coherent right and this this is called as the pro this is the process of stimulated em emission now what is important to understand here is more number of photons present there in the vicinity of an excited state the uh, probability or chance of de excitation goes on increasing now i i know i'm not sure how many of you feel how many of you for how many of you it is not obvious but to me when i came to know about that for the first time it was weird how could this happen the the photon in fact should provide energy to the system and the system should then try to stay in a higher energy state that means the probability of transition should go on decreasing and lifetime lifetime of the excited state should increase but that is not what happens more number of photons there more number of external photons there of the given frequency the probability of transition is more lifetime goes on decreasing right these are the three post processes that we have uh, to discuss in this lecture um that that's all for this lecture any if there are any questions please let me know now